Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Currently, I am working on rendering a outdoor nature scene, not this one that I have on my screen here. And I'm about maybe 20% through with the render, and it's already taken up about three evenings, maybe even four evenings, uh, rendering while it's rendering overnight. And as I start to see the picture emerging, I realize that on one of the buildings that I planted ivy on, I planted a dark color ivy, like where my cursor is hovered on, and it looks nice, but uh, as I am seeing the picture develop, I realize that I wish I didn't plant this dark green ivy. I wish I had used my ecosystem and chosen a ivy a little bit more colorful like this here in the foreground something that catches the sunlight and shows you know some nice yellow tones to it and something that's a little bit more varied in color this ivy is fine but it's n now looking back it's not what I would have preferred if I knew exactly what uh, it would have looked like in my render well I'm not gonna go back and repaint uh, re an ecosystem of a different ivy on it because I will have lost three to four days or three to four evenings worth of render time. So I was thinking, well, I want to fix that, but I'm not going to do it in view. So I thought I would come over here in Photoshop. So to use as a example or an illustration, I'm using this image here that I created several months ago because I figured this is exactly the sort of image that I'm going to have when view is done rendering my picture and it would be a good test candidate to see if the technique that I wanted to use to turn this color of ivy into something like this would work well so first thing I want to do is create a new layer. I'm going to come over here to my paintbrush. Now when I first was playing with this, let me reset my brushes here. When I was first playing with this, I used my favorite number 11 brush and it worked well because it actually um, looked fairly similar to this ivy here. And as I uh, thought about it a little bit more, I thought, well, wait a minute, let me go check my brushes. I bet I've got some leaf brushes that uh, would do the job for me and look a little bit more convincing. So I do happen to have some leaf brushes. And I'm going to choose this number 184 right here. If you don't have any leaf brushes, that number 11 brush that I just demonstrated earlier will work just fine. Well, these are the colors I'm going to choose for my fore and background. And now I'm going to come over here, open up my brush palette, and make a few settings. First thing I want to do is I want the uh, spacing to be about 25%. Shape dynamics, because I'm using a Wacom tablet, I want to adjust my size jitter and set that to pin pressure maximum diameter I want the angle jitter at about 60 per um, 64 around that and and this is important I want it to I want to set the control of it to initial direction that way the shape of the brush itself will be altered as I am painting and so you don't and that way you don't see that rubber stamped look of the same leaf shape over and over and over again because there's some rotation to it it makes it a little bit more varied I want to enable scattering both axes and I want to control it by pin pressure count down to all the way down count jitter I want it to be about 50 percent and again controlled by pin pressure I want to enable color dynamics because even though um, this camel color is my foreground color, watch what happens as I start painting. The color dynamics 
I am a, with, using color dynamics, I am able to utilize both colors. And if you play with the, the hue jitter, you can adjust the hue color of the leaf every time it is replicated here on your layer. And let me see, do I have anything under? Yeah, I want um, opacity jitter and flow jitter also enabled. So these are the settings I have. Let me bring this right back here. I'm going to bring the pin size down. Now, because I've already played around with this, I know I'm going to want to set this layer on color dodge. But for right now, I will leave it at normal. And let's come up here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'll just show you the effect that it starts giving. I also want opacity and flow up to 100%. I'm going to start painting this leaf right here onto this ivy. And I'm going to slightly vary my brush size as I am doing this. Now, admittedly, against this real ivy texture, this does not look all that fantastic. Now that I think about it, there's also one more thing I want to enable. I want to enable texture. And I am using the grayscale paper textures. And I want to set it to color burn. So let me delete that layer, create a new one, and I'll start setting, and it will now start painting my leaf with that grayscale paper with a uh, color burn overlay. And you can't really see a whole lot because I am drawing these so small, but it does make a, a noticeable difference. Okay, so I'm painting in my ivy. And it looks, uh, there's no contrast in any of this, so it looks artificial against this real ivy texture that has real-time lighting and shadows against it. So, as I said earlier, I know I want this layer to be on color dodge. So I'm going to come up here, change to color dodge, and look at the dramatic effect that it has. Probably a little bit too dramatic. So I'm going to want to bring the opacity of this layer down a little bit. And I'll just add a little more up here. And because I'm using a pressure sensitive pin on my Wacom tablet, if I get some down here in an area I don't want, all I need to do is just turn my pin around, use the back end of it, and it becomes my eraser. OK, I think you get the idea. I am achieving what I wanted. And let's zoom out and have a better pers get a better perspective of it. This is the before, and that's the after. And it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted this look over here on this solid dark green ivy. Now, I'm going to create a new layer. Using this same technique up here on some of this ivy here in the foreground, where it's uh, the textures and the shape are much larger, the process still works very well. So I'm just going to do a little more doodling here. Something that my teachers, when I was in grade school, was uh, were always uh, complaining about me. Stop doodling on my paper. Well, teacher, maybe if you were a little more interesting, I wouldn't be doodling. So I'm um, 
doodling up here. Now, one of the things that's neat about this is in these uh, shaded areas. By using this, you can paint in here and give the impression as though the light from the sun that is illuminating some of these areas is still catching more of these little pieces of ivy, more of these little leaves here, and especially up under this here. Set it to color dodge, and you see the effect here. We are bringing out more, uh, some more highlights that is, are naturally being covered up from the, uh, from the shadows. And because I have the, what is it called, the hue jitter enabled, that's where I'm getting these little red uh, or kind of strawberry, orangey colors uh, thrown in here as well. Because, like I said, it's playing with the hue uh, between these two colors. So, actually, I don't want it right here. Let me use my the back end of my brush to erase that. Very convenient using a Wacom tablet. Okay, let's see if we can just get a little sunlight bouncing off these here a little bit. Ooh, that looks nice. And all of this is being done in post work to cover up my shortcomings on what I did not do in view. So in just a few minutes, I'm able to save myself from having to lose several days of render time that I've already invested uh, for several evenings. Okay, I'll just do a couple more right here. I think you get the idea. And let's back out of this. That's before, and that's after. And it's a really neat little effect. This is the background layer, the one back here. That's bef the before, and that's the after. So I got exactly what I want. And it took me just a few minutes of time, and I saved myself from having to lose a whole bunch of render time or just having to go back and redo it all in view and then have to render that again. Now, I've got my brush set up. I like this effect, and I like all the settings that I have applied to it, all the shape dynamics, scattering texture, color dynamics, other, etc., I would hate to have to want to do this procedure again, say, next week, and have to go and experiment and click on all the little things that, ha that took me you know, five, seven minutes earlier before I recorded this. Well, if you come over here to Brush, click here, come over here to Save Brushes. Whoops. I think it's Save Preset. New Brush Preset. I could save this and it will save all of these options with my number 184 brush. But what it will not do is it will not save these colors that I have associated with it. On the other hand, if you come up to this icon right up here and click on this little uh, down arrow, you can Come right over here, click here, New Tool Preset. Not only is this a brush, but it's a tool. So you can call it Autumn Ivy. And it allows you the option of whether you want to include color. What color? Well, these two colors that you selected earlier. Well, I've already gone ahead and named it Autumn Ivy. So I will, just for the sake of argument, Let's come over here, and I will reset my brushes, replace the current ones. Yes, now I will do that, and we will reset our colors. Okay, now I just have a typical brush, typical hard-edged round brush with black and white. If I come up here and choose my Autumn Ivy, it selects, <coughs> it selects that 
leaf brush that is not included in this set. That brush is not included with this set. So if I wanted to use this brush again, oh my goodness, I'd have to wade through my ever-expanding list of brushes just to find this and then go and uh, uh, set all of my brush settings. But instead, it loaded that brush for me all of the brush presets and the colors and so now I can just start continuing to paint next week next month exactly where I left off at this particular moment in time so when you want to save a brush and all of its presets yeah you can save it here but if you go to reload your brushes reset your brushes you may lose it up here it's always there, and it keeps the colors that you're currently using associated with it. So this is a cool little post-work tutorial right here in Photoshop, and I hope you can benefit from it. So thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.